All right, so this is the longer tutorial of how to use the Ad Labs Bit Optimizer. This video assumes that you watch the short version, so if you haven't done that yet, go back and watch that one because this one's gonna be skipping all of that and just really diving into the weeds. So one of the things that I mentioned on the last video is that if there was a campaign that had a really low data, just only a few clicks or only one order, and that's not really enough data for us to really have it make informed decisions around what the campaign placement settings should be. The way in which we're going to solve that is by taking a group of campaigns and aggregating that data so that we can have a lot more data to basically just calculate the, the placement settings off of. So you will want to, and, and these optimization groups, we call them optimization groups. These are going to be things that you set up yourself. And so you're going to want to group campaigns together that have similar products in them, similar tactics, like they're only going after non-brand keywords or only going for, for brand defense. So first of all, you know, you want to make sure that your campaigns are in a pretty decent structure. And then with, after you have your structured campaigns, you're going to group them together by campaigns that do have, you know, similar conversion rates, similar, similar AOV, average order value. And so I'm not sure exactly, like, I think in the past, we, we can look at this, this dab campaign. I'm, I'm not sure how many campaigns have dab in it. I'll just type in dab and we'll pretend. Yeah, we'll just pretend all of these campaigns were, you know, some specific product of mine. So you can just select all of these. And then under optimization groups, you can come here. And I forgot about this, but you have to, we can't group sponsor products and sponsor brand campaigns together just because the placement settings are different. And so it is, uh, these optimization groups are limited to a specific type. So you'll just, let's just say I'm only going to be grabbing these sponsor product ones. And by the way, for fast selecting, you can shift click to kind of, if you click up here and then shift click down here, it will select everything in between. Just a quick, quick tip there for you. But I'm going to go to my optimization groups. If you already have a previously existing group, you can just add it there. If you're creating a new one, like for this one, I'm going to say these are my DAB products. And then these are now, once I create these, you don't have to set a target ACOS or prioritization. I'll explain in a second why you might want to. But I could just group these together, and all this means is that the next time I run the bid optimizer, if any of these campaigns, like you can already see this one, this one uh, down here, this one's got really low data. This one, only one click. Yeah, this for sure. Yeah, so actually, let's do this. So if I'm trying to optimize this with 30%, and I'm let's say I'm only trying to optimize this campaign because it didn't have enough data to really make informed decisions, we're going to be referencing the campaign group to try to figure out, you know what, based off the group of campaigns, we actually think we can be spending a bit more on rest of search. So that will start coming up there. And so that's just an example of, of where that would come into play. And then as, as you saw, when I clicked optimize bids, there's this setting here that says, do you want to use the optimization group settings or ignore them? So what that means is that let's say, you know, generally speaking for this whole account, we like to be at a 30% target ACOS. But for this specific set of campaigns, maybe this is a new product or it's ranking campaigns, maybe I want to have a higher target A cost. And so if I mouse over these optimization groups, you'll see that my target A cost is not set as well as the prioritization has not yet been set. So I'm going to come over to the optimization groups and this will be all of the kind of campaign groups and optimization groups that I've set together. And I can now come to this one. And for these ones, let's say we're trying to be really aggressive. We're going for like a 60% target ACOS, you can enter that here. And then under your prioritization, you could set a unique prioritization such as increase sales. But my point of view is that even if it's a ranking campaign, it's better to just set a higher target ACOS and go with the balanced approach just because that increase sales isn't really meant to be something that you're doing perpetually and like leaving this campaign group always in that state. Yeah, I prefer to go balanced. In fact, most of the time I actually leave these as not set for all my campaign groups, like you can see already over here, like I'll usually set a specific target ACOS for my optimization groups, but I won't set a unique prioritization except for, you know, exceptions and, and certain circumstances. But the reason why I don't do that is because you'll see here when I come back to this page and I try to optimize all my campaigns and I, and I have this toggled on and I say, use my optimization group settings. What that means, and you can see this here, when I enter a 30% or whatever I'm entering now as my target ACOS, that is going to apply to any campaigns that are not an optimization group. So, so we're calling those are ungrouped campaigns. 
or if the optimization group was not set on either of these values, then these will apply if, if you, those optimization groups were not set. But for anything else where it was set, it's going to be using what, what the optimization group settings are. So if, when I hit apply now, for any campaign that's not in an optimization group, or if the optimization group target A cost isn't set, it's going to be going with that 30%. For any of the other optimization groups that had a unique value there, the optimizer will be using that setting. The reason why I don't like to set a prioritization for those individual optimization groups, this is just a, a personal preference thing, but because I'm so frequently switching back and forth between, most of the time I'm doing balance, but then periodically I'll come through and just try to reduce A cost or just try to increase sales. And I just like to kind of do that across the board for, I like the flexibility, I guess, of being able to just quickly flip these toggles here rather than having to go back into the optimization groups and change those every single time. So that's a, a me thing. But you also can turn off the optimization group settings, which in that scenario, we will still use the data from the campaign groups to inform those low campaign data decisions. But in terms of the actual inputs to the bid optimizer, we will basically not be going with whatever target A costs you put on those optimization groups or the prioritization. We're, we're only strictly going to be going with what you enter here. So this toggle is basically just for the target A costs and prioritization for those optimization groups. So let's say we are going to go with the 30% target A costs and the balance prioritization. Now we have the option to have a few more advanced controls. So down here, you're going to see that you have, we have four different targets to optimize. We have, for two of these, we're focusing on improving efficiency. That's the overall A cost. So we're going to be optimizing bids on high A cost keywords and then optimizing bids on high spend non-converting keywords. What these basically mean, and if you go into that Ad Labs help documentation, which once again, it's, you'll go to, I need help. You'll click help over here. And then the white box bidding algorithm. We're going to get into a lot more detail in here. So definitely reference this. You'll see that with each prioritization, exactly how these, these thresholds and the bid adjustment increases and per percentage amounts and everything are going to change just slightly across the different prioritizations. So definitely reference that, that article for just additional information. But essentially for high A costs, it's just going to be that if there's any keywords that are overshooting that target A cost, we're going to be calculating the bids to pull them down back to where they should be in order to hit the, the target A cost. And then for high spend non-converting keywords, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be calculating the, aver the average order value for all of your ad groups and campaigns. And then based off your average order value and based off of your target A cost, we're going to know on average, how much can you basically spend to get that order? So what's your target cost per acquisition? And so for example, if you have a $10 product, $10 AOV, your target A cost is 30%. That means you can only spend up to $3 to get that $10 sale. So if there's a keyword that has over $3 of spend and no sales, we're not necessarily trying to pause or archive that keyword right away. It might only be like one click with the $3 CPC. We're not going to try to pause or archive it because the keyword might be relevant, but we do know that you can't afford a $3 CPC when your average order value is $10. So we're just going to be calculating those bids so that we're not overspending on those non-converting keywords. And, you know, these will just continue pulling that, that bid all the way down to, to two cents because <clears throat> that's the lowest that you can go on sponsored products. And so we're just going to be calibrating these bids. And then, you know, if you're talking about if you want to know more information about when should you pause or archive a keyword, we'll make sure that we have some other help documentation answering that. And then over on improve sales over here, we're simply just going to be increasing our bids on our low visibility as well. Sorry, our, our low ACOS as well as our low visibility keywords. Now you may recall on the Amazon bulk sheets that when you are downloading uh, a report, you can either include or exclude rows with zero impressions. So basically if there's a keyword with absolutely no impressions, do you want to include this? The reason why we make this a little optional kind of subset of low visibility is that it's just going to massively increase the total amount of low visibility keywords that you have. So you'll, you'll see here, like if I was to only optimize on these low visibility, let's see how many, how many rows we actually end up getting here. So we got 4,000 targets that were considered low visibility as well as the placement settings for those campaigns. And then if we come back here and now let's say, let's include the zero impression rows. Let's see exactly how many more, how many more rows of data that we get. 
So now it's 12,000. So you see that <laughs> we went from, from increasing bids by like 5% on just 4,000 now to 12,000. So even though it's a small incremental adjustment, just the sheer quantity of volume of keywords that are being adjusted, that could really cause your total spend to, to blow up. So that's just one additional toggle for you. So I only really include zero impression rows when it's really time to push sales. In fact, this is another reason why I so rarely use the increased sales prioritization just because this one's pretty aggressive. If, and if I really do want to be slightly more aggressive, I would rather just raise my target A costs or include these zero impression rows. That's just a way to, to be a little bit more balanced in that push to grow more sales rather than just really just slamming the gas pedal. So yeah, when you, when you push those through, you once again get to QA all of the results that come through. So I just put in all four of the bid optimizations just so we can get a real good mix of keywords here. And you'll see here that because we did have different optimization groups within these target A costs and prioritization columns, all of that information will be here for, you know, whether something was like this, this was just kind of using those default settings that we entered, but then other items that were in optimization groups had unique settings. So they were going with 50% or whatever. Now to quickly arrange and, and rearrange these columns, you can uh, just click and drag these things around. You can use this little, these little sizes here to uh, widen or, or shorten these. If you double click this fun fact, if you double click the little vertical separator, it will auto limit the column to the width so that it could fit all the text in it. And then down here, we've got some additional columns. So you can see, you can add in your optimization groups if you wanted to see those. With this vertical line here, if you pull something over to the left of that vertical line, it will automatically pin it there for you. So, and we're gonna be saving these settings. So whenever you push some, some changes through, or sorry, when, whenever you make some changes to this table, will be saving those presets for you so that the next time you log in and, and run some optimizations, it's all kind of saved where, where it last left off. So you can feel free to customize this where it's to, to where it's a, at a point where you really like the setup. So when you are coming in here to QA things, uh, there's a few ways in which you could do it. I sometimes just try to sort by highest spend. That's usually where I like to see because that's those are the most influential elements in my account, the ones that are spending the most. You can also sort by the delta and you can apply all sorts of different different filters. So what I typically like to do is hit the filters option and we've got a whole bunch of different filters for you to apply. I like looking specifically at the change reasons. You can just type in reason, pull this up <clears throat> and we've got all of our different conditions in here. So maybe I'll just like to look at, you know, let's ju just see what's going on with my high A cost keywords and we'll probably see actually some really good information here. So for these high A cost keywords, we're going to be pulling down the bids on a lot of them. Not always though. You'll see some, some scenarios in which we're actually raising the bids on these keywords. And the reason why that is, is that we're, we're not just doing a very simple approach in which if it's high A costs, pull the bid down. What we're doing is if it's high A costs, we then calculate the bid. So we're not just saying take the bid, reduce it by 10%. We are calculating what the bid for the keyword should be based off of the keyword's own data, based off of that keyword's conversion rates, the average order value, um, the, the revenue per click. That's the information we're using. We don't like to just decrease from the keyword bid itself because there could be scenarios where, I mean, the, the keyword bid under this current value, the keyword bid itself is not a data point. This isn't showing us, this doesn't show us what the historical bid was during this, this time period, right? I optimized over the last like two and a half weeks. <clears throat> the, I could have, I mean, I have optimized bids since, you know, during, within this time frame. So this could have been hypothetically, like if I had Let's just say I brought this bid down or someone brought this bid down to two cents or five cents just a few moments. Boy, I started optimizing, you know, Andrew went in there and reduced the bids to two cents. Now, when I look back over the last two weeks, that keyword is still high ACOS because that's the historical ACOS for this keyword over that date range. So why would I want to reduce the bid by 10% or 15%, whatever, when the bid's already at two cents or five cents? It doesn't make sense to continue reducing it further when that bid adjustment just went through. So we don't just take that super simple approach for that very reason that the, the keyword, the current bid itself is, is, is not a, a data point. It's just a status. So what we do is we're actually calculating the bid afresh. And so why you might see these bid increases on high ACOS keywords is that 
the last time you ran the, the bid optimizer or the last time you made some, some bid adjustments, uh, we pulled the keyword bid down to around 78 cents. But now as you're running it again, as you're using a different time frame, the keyword has maybe done better than it did during the last time. And so even though historically the, the ACOS is still a bit high, let me pull in, where is my ACOS column here? Oh, here's my ACOS. So even though the ACOS still is high, it's the keyword is performing better than it was before. And so that's potentially one reason why this bid is increasing. The other thing too, is that we're also factoring in the campaign placement settings into these individual keyword bids. So it is possible that that something changed with the campaign placements, which is allowing us to, to get a slightly higher bid on these keywords. So that's all just something to keep in mind. Now, I want to look at one other scenario that uh, I think is worth explaining. Ability. When you are increasing bids on low visibility keywords, the mistake that I see a lot of people and a lot of software do is that they just increase the bid without any kind of ceiling for how high that, that keyword can go. So it might just have one click, no sales keyword, and they just raise the bid. But those keywords aren't always low visibility because the the bid is too low. Those keywords could be low visibility just because it's really low search volume and it's only ever going to get one click within a 30 day time period. And so if you're perpetually, this keyword's perpetually stuck in like a low visibility status, then your low visibility optimizations of increasing by 5% or 10% just going on forever, just every single week, just another 10%, another 10%, another 10%. Eventually, you're going to be seeing these one one click a month keywords getting two dollar bids, three dollar bids, five dollar bids. I mean, I've seen these bids get up to like twenty dollars and thirty dollars by softwares that are just perpetually increasing the bids on these keywords. And those keywords aren't going to flag any major spend issues because they're only ever getting one click, and it's only spending like two bucks a, or like a five dollar CPC here, you know. But cumulatively, all of those keywords together can really drain and, and bleed your account, and so. What we have is we've done something called smart bid ceilings, and we should see a couple of them will, will kick in here. So generally speaking, we're going to be increasing these bids by 5% on the balanced approach. But we do know that at a certain point, it doesn't make sense to just keep raising this bid based off of the ad groups data. So we're going to be looking at the ad groups, um, average order value, average conversion rate to figure out what's the maximum CPC that we can afford. And then we don't want to let the we don't want to let the the this bid here just become a runaway bid that just goes on for forever. And so what we're going to do is we will be calculating what the average cost per click for the ad group should be, and then we will be essentially if depending on which prioritization you use, we'll determine what the ceiling is going to be. So when you're going balanced in this scenario, apparently the average cost per click for this ad group is around forty five cents. And I only know that because the current bid is set to 90 cents because on the balance prioritization, we will allow the keywords bid on low visibility. We'll keep raising it up to the point where it gets to twice what the average cost per click should be for the ad group. And so that's basically just saying we're going to make room for um, if, if a keyword happens to convert twice as good as the rest of the ad group average conversion rate, we're going to allow that keyword bid to just keep going up up to around twice what's technically affordable for the ad group. So we'll make that adjustment. If you are using the reduce A cost prioritization, then we have a hard stop at the average, the, the ad group's average cost per click target. So if I was doing reduced prioritization and if the ad group, you know, our calculations are saying the ad group average cost per click, it's really only worth 45 cents. This uh, low visibility keyword will actually have its bid reduced down to 45, ce 45 cents. And then... If you're going with increased sales, we'll allow it to go up to three times above the average cost per click for the ad group. So basically saying we're going to, for this low visibility keyword, it hasn't gotten any clicks, we'll increase, increase that bid, and we're going to give it an opportunity of raising that bid up until the point where we're spending three times what we technically should, can't afford for this, for this ad group until we start imposing that ceiling. We say, okay, we're not going to be raising it anymore. And so... There may be times where the ad group itself has really low data. And if it does have low data, I'm not sure if we have a, we can try to check in here if there's any campaign bid ceilings or other bid ceilings that have kicked in. I'll have to remove low visibility. Yeah. So then you can see too, if, if the ad group itself has low data, we'll then derive that bid ceiling information from the campaign. And if the campaign has low data, 
the the campaign group. And so that's going to be how those smart bid ceilings work, which I just really like this feature because it gives me a lot of confidence in raising these bids because I know that I can pretty comfortably increase the bids on like by by five or ten percent on several thousand keywords. And I know that I'm not going to be going crazy because I haven't exceeded any of these ceilings that are tailored down to every individual ad group with with where those should be. Now, there may be some people who don't want to use these bid ceilings. You can turn them off. So if you come back here, you see that we have these smart bid ceilings. Uh, when it's toggled on, we're going to automatically apply those. You could turn them off and just say, you know, a flat $2 kind of max bid is what I'm going to do. So we're basically just going to optimize all of the, the keywords as we normally would. But if there's anything in there that, that where the bid is over $2, we're going to flatten it down to a $2 ceiling. I really wouldn't recommend it. The, these smart bid ceilings are are very, very, um, it's very so, solid logic. So I would recommend doing that. Uh, we don't currently have a bid floor option. The The bid floors in, in the optimizer are basically just as low as it could possibly go. So it's like two cents for sponsored products, like, I don't know, like 10 cents for sponsored brands, 25 cents for sponsored brand video. Now, you could, you know, if you wanted to say, let's let's here find a, a filter for where the new value, let's say if there's anything that's less than like a, a 10 cent bid and, you know, for all of my keywords, you know, and if I'm trying to find everything that's less than and you want to apply a certain floor here, you could select all and you can bulk edit these items and you can say, you know what, these should, you know, I'm going to set these all to 10 cents and kind of manually overwrite that change to, to apply a bid floor there. So that's one way in which you can apply a bid floor if you would like to. Now, in terms of frequency of optimization, what I like to do is I optimize my bids around once or twice a week. So typically on Mondays, I'll come in here. So today's Tuesday. So, you know, on Monday, I'll come in, I'll look at the last week of performance just to kind of get an overview of like, how do we do last week? How was ACOS? Oh, look, ACOS was, was really low. It came in under under target. We typically like to go for 30%. So, uh, you know, I'll probably start targeting a slightly higher target ACOS now. And, you know, let's just say in this event, I'm saying, yeah, we're going to go for 30%. And maybe it's it's important that we increase our sales. So I do increase sales and I really start going for 30. And I'll push that through on, on Mondays. And then I'll come back midweek. And also, sorry, on Mondays, I'm usually optimizing all four of these targets. And then I monitor throughout the week and then I come back on, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'm kind of reviewing the midweek performance, looking at the past few days of data. If over that time period, I saw that the changes that I made through were maybe a little too aggressive, uh, the ACOS spiked too much, then I can do a fine tuning adjustment, in which case I'm, I'm still using a, a slightly shorter time frame to account for that. You don't have, you could do somewhere in between. You could use, you know, that full... I wouldn't recommend doing just like the last two days since you optimized. That's probably too short of data. So I, I would certainly recommend having at least seven days in there just to really make sure you're getting enough click data. Although if you pick a really short time frame, because we do kind of roll up and, and group up things, group group entities together to try to solve for those low data environments, that'll help. But realistically, I, I, I wouldn't ever go less than seven days on an optimization, optimization time frame unless if there's like a critical emergency of something like you saw spend shot through the roof yesterday. And so you really just want to, you know, get things dialed in just using yesterday's spend. But for the most most part, you know, if you saw that your ACOS started trending a little bit hot and you just want to do what I call the midweek tweak, you're coming in on Wednesday or Thursday, you're optimizing your bids and you're only going to focus on, you know, you'll just go balance or you could just do reduce ACOS, whatever. And uh, you're only going to focus on improving just the high cost keywords or the high spend on converting keywords. Now, on the inverse of that, let's just say that I came in on Monday and let's now pretend my my target ACOS is 25%. So if I came in on Monday and I optimized everything, targeting a 25% ACOS and was optimizing all four settings, pushed those through, and then I come back and on Wednesday or Thursday, I see that, man, that was too aggressive. My When I tried to go down to 25%, it just it lost way too many sales. I didn't really want mean to lose that many. You can come back for that midweek tweak on Wednesday or Thursday, 
And in that case, only focus on pushing the low ACoS, low visibility. Or you, you could just say, to be really safe, you say, I'm only gonna push on keywords that low visibility are keywords that may or may not have a sale. Low ACoS keywords obviously have at least one sale, otherwise there wouldn't be an ACoS there. And so you may feel more comfortable only pushing bids on those low ACoS keywords to, to try to pick up that spend, try to get those sales back, still in a really conservative way. So yeah, on Mondays, I'm usually going through, I double check a, a few different date ranges, I'll optimize all four of these, and then up to the overall spend pacing of whether or not you wanna include all zero impressions. And then when I come back midweek, I'm usually only gonna do just these two or just these two, or to really fine tune it, I'll only pick one. My choice of preference when I'm trying to be really conservative, but I wanna increase the spend a little bit, is just to push on those low ACoS keywords. And then if ACoS is too high and I wanna pull back sl uh, slightly and just be really conservative there, I like pushing the high spend non-converting, uh, just pushing that one through. Because obviously, if you have a high ACoS keyword, there still are sales happening on those keywords. And so you could potentially lose some sales on that, but high spend on converting, there's pretty good confidence of just being able to push this through and having pretty low impact. Or even if you just push these two through, I haven't actually done that before, but you could try just pushing a little bit of spend on the low A cost. And you can think of it that you're funding that spend that you're pushing here from your high spend on converting and just shifting that spend over by reducing these and increasing these. So those are just some ways in which you can make smaller adjustments midweek. But sometimes I come in midweek and everything looks great and we're pacing well and I don't really touch anything. And so I just make those main changes at the start of the week and that's kind of it. And then I review the, the following week. Now, as we wrap up here, there's just a couple of last things I want to say. First is that when you are entering your target ACoS, just be mindful of where your current ACoS is at and the difference between your target ACoS and your current ACoS. I've seen a few people come in where their ACoS is like 50% and they're trying to get it down to 25% and they just push it through. And you know, when you push through those big ACoS reductions like that, you're gonna lose some sales in the process. Now, if you're really sure that you would rather have fewer sales at a lower target ACoS or at a lower ACoS, go for it. You absolutely can, but just be mindful of it. I've seen people who have ranking campaigns that are going for like, they're at 80%, 100% ACoS, and then they start entering their true target ACoS at 25%. And they're like, hey, I lost all my visibility on these ranking campaigns. It's like, well, yeah. Like, unfortunately, this Amazon auction or the advertising place is an auction and you can be outbid by competitors. If the market price for that keyword is really high, the CPCs are really high, you can't just get the same visibility with a lower CPC if other competitors are driving up those prices. So you have to be mindful of that. So if you do have a specific keyword that you're really trying to rank on, set that aside in a separate optimization group, give it a higher target ACoS just to allow those, those bids to get up higher and, and you can you know be investing in that keyword for, for ranking. So just be mindful of that, that if you are trying to pull that ACoS down a, a big distance from where it is, it's you know, recommend to, to slowly step it down, maybe pull it down five or 10% a week and do that over a series of weeks to try to slowly pull it down and keep an eye on, on what kind of visibility you're getting at different thresholds. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if this is your very first time ever using Ad Labs and you're wondering, you know, for my very first optimizations, should I be doing anything special or unique? What I would recommend doing is, so let's just say your target day cost is 25%, you're currently at 27%. That's great. You're pretty close to target. We're just going to try to pull it down slightly. My recommendation would be to go with balanced and only focus on the high A cost and high spend non-converting keywords. I wouldn't worry about improving the sales just yet because what's going to happen is that when you optimize these, we are also going to be adjusting your placement settings. And for a lot of people out there, they're either don't have any increases for any play campaign placements or they're underinvested in those placements. And a lot of the times you'll see that top of search can actually go a lot higher than you think it can. Top of search is usually worth around 50%, 30 to 50% higher CPCs compared to your kind of total account. And then if you're actually trying to separate like product pages versus the rest of search and factoring that into the keyword bids, top of search can actually go a lot higher than even that if you are trying to reduce spend on something like product pages. And so we will work to be increasing those placements on top of search most likely if the performance dictates it, which most of the time, at least in all the examples I've seen, top of search is always gonna be increased quite a bit. So 
for your very first few rounds of optimizations, I'd recommend just go with, just optimize the high A cost and high spend on converting, push those through the rest of the bump on these like low A cost, low visibility keywords that will kind of display itself through the campaign placement settings as we start increasing for top of search. And that could be a, a good offset. So you probably don't need to, to push on these just yet. Although you absolutely could no harm there. The only thing is if you push all four of these through and you've never had an increase for top of search before, and now we start raising it up to like a 33% increase for top of search, there could be certain keywords in that campaign that had never previously gotten the chance to even display at top of search. Even though the top of search data looks good, only a few of the keywords were actually winning those placements. And after you increase the placement for top of search for that whole campaign, now you've got a whole bunch of other keywords that are now winning placements up there. And you could see potentially that the, the spend or ACOS really kicks up after that first adjustment, which if that happens, no problem. You can just come back in and just re-optimize those high ACOS keywords, re-optimize high spend on converting. And if it's really an emergency, you can use, use reduce ACOS that will really pull some things down for you. So I hope that all makes sense. Like I said, and as another reminder, if you do have, if you have any questions, come over here, say need help. We've got some really good help documentation with some best practices, FAQs, and then you can also shoot me a message through here and I'm happy to talk to you. All right. Really looking forward to hearing your guys' feedback. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the AdLabs app. Talk to you later.